Uh, good morning and welcome back. I hope all of you are well rested and refreshed and ready for the second day. Uh, today, yesterday, if you remember, we spoke about philosophy, an introduction to philosophy, about what philosophy is. Today, we are going to continue, like I said yesterday, about ethics. Ethics is one branch of philosophy. Yesterday, after the session, I got a few questions, some of which were uh, about how to judge particular actions, if I'm correct. And uh, I have promised them that today we are going to deal with some of those questions as well if you don't get your answers uh, from today's lecture, right? So let's begin. Uh, a little bit of recap from yesterday, we spoke about the branches of philosophy, which were uh, metaphysics, epistemology, logic, ethics, and aesthetics. So to, today we are going to concentrate only on ethics or the study of morality. Ethics is that branch of philosophy which concentrates on morality, on moral problems, moral judgments, moral any kind of moral questions. So there are three basic terminologies that we we'll deal with if we study ethics. The first thing that we learn in ethics are the three terminologies of moral, immoral, and non-moral. The moral is very simple. The actions which are morally good. Can you give me an example, anyone? One of you? Any action which is morally good? Yeah. When we give uh, moral, yeah, helping someone is a better example because uh, when I'm asking questions and giving an answer to it, if you know, you will give the answer. If you do not know, you will not give the answer. So we might not bring that under the scope of morality, right? But helping someone is a good example. That intention. So details we are going to come later on, but right now, just on the face of it, helping someone looks good, right? Helping someone looks like it is a morally good action. The intention and everything, we are going to come to that later, but just right now, we are just starting with it. So we are just differentiating between morally good and morally bad. And immoral is something that is not morally good. It is morally bad. So if you can come up with an example, lies, lying. Right? Then what is non-moral? If immoral is lying or murdering, whatever, then what is non-moral? <laughs> Habit. If I'm habitually stealing from someone, is that correct? Or is that, will that be? Bad, bad habit. Yeah, it is a bad habit. No, if I'm habitually stealing from someone, no, it is bad. Exactly. That can neither be classed under moral nor under non-moral on the face of it. Again, don't please don't go to intentions and consequences at the moment. We'll come to that later. So on the face of it, the one that cannot be classified under moral or immoral, we are going to call those actions non-moral. Like a kid here is eating a chocolate. So we might not want to classify that as a very moral action or an immoral action. That is a non-moral action. Right? So now, from this understanding of moral, immoral, and non-moral, we come to two different senses in which the term morality is used. Morality can be used in a broad sense as opposed to non-moral actions, that actions which come under the purview of morality as different from non-moral actions. We are leaving out non-moral actions and everything that comes under the purview of morality, be it moral actions or immoral actions, will be termed moral in the broad sense since it comes under the purview of morality. That is moral in the broad sense. But in the narrow sense of the term, we are going to refer to only morally good actions as moral. So in the broad sense, any action that can come under the purview of morality as 
different from non-moral actions will be termed moral in the broad sense. And in the narrow sense, we are going to talk only about morally good actions as moral. So the main difference between moral in the narrow sense and moral in the wider sense is that in the wider sense, it includes both moral in the narrow sense and immoral actions. It is also clear from the picture that is being shown, right? Moral in the broad sense includes both moral and immoral actions anything that comes under the purview of morality. But in the narrow sense, it includes only actions which are morally good as different from immoral actions. So morality in the broad sense is differentiated from non-moral actions and morality in the narrow sense is differentiated from immoral actions. Okay? If it's clear, can I proceed? Now, just imagine for a moment that there is nothing called morality. Right at this moment, I'm giving you a special reference, just you, everybody individually, nobody else. Just a special preference that for you, there is no morality, no question of morality. Whatever you do, nothing will be asked by the police or any person, you will, your actions will not be judged. Okay, do you like the idea? You like the idea? You can do whatever you want. It will not be morally judged by anybody. Nobody is going to see what you're doing and you can do whatever you want. Do you like the idea or not? Yes? I can see a lot of people saying yes. <laughs> to some extent. Okay, still you like it. So if we all like the idea of there being no moral rules, then why did we come up with such an institution in our society? Why did we need it at all? We could do away with it. Morality is an institution that was decided by us when we formed a society. So if you're so happy, when there, if I suggest by the idea of it, that there is no moral rules, nothing to judge you, then why did we come up with it at all? What was the need? What was the requirement? See, I said that it is just for you. Now, if I just extend this, that this rule applies to everybody. Everybody is free to do whatever they want. They will not be questioned. They will not be judged. There will not be any police, anything, any moral policing. Now, do you like the idea? See? Yeah, when I'm saying it is just for you, only you have the special opportunity of doing it, then you like it. But the moment I say it is for everybody, then you know that you can be at the receiving end as well. And you don't like it. So that is the reason the institution of morality was first con decided on, first constructed, whatever. So it is like a social contract. Because otherwise, the conditions of living in a society are not attained. The other option, the option of not having any moral laws or conditions is a state where most of us are not going to be better off than we are at the moment. Right? If you know that you can do something without anybody looking, without anybody judging, that is good. But if everybody else can also do the same, then anybody can come and murder me at the moment. Anybody can do whatever they want, steal my things, whatever they want. I don't want that. So that is why we decided to enter into a contract with each other in order to live in a society. That there are certain things I am not going to do to you, provided that those things are something that you are also not going to do to me. This is the kind of contract we are all living in and it is called the social contract. And this is the reason why morality as an institution was developed in the society. Because otherwise, the conditions of living in a society were not attained. See, right at this moment, we know, I know more or less that somebody is suddenly is not going to come up and give me a tight slap. Right? Similarly, you also know that I'm suddenly not going to run, up, uh, run away with your purse. We know that we are not going to do that in, with, to each other because there is a kind of contract between us, a social contract. 
that we have decided to maintain. Now, there can be two kinds of thinking related to morality. One is the descriptive thinking, where we describe the situation about what it is like, what the action was like, what the situation was like. It is described that what people actually do, what you actually did in that situation, what people actually do in a situation. And the other is the normative or the prescriptive thinking. Prescriptive is like the doctor prescribes and we follow. The same way, the ethicists can also prescribe what should be done. What, should, what you should have done in this situation, what a person should have done in the situation or what anyone should have done in that situation. So when the question is about should, ought, what ought to have been done, what the right action ought to have been, then the question, then the kind of thinking that relates to it is the normative or the prescriptive thinking. To give a very simple example, if I say, uh, you are a good girl, I am describing. But if I say you ought to be a good girl or you should be a good girl, then I am prescribing. The kind of thinking that is mostly used in ethics is the prescriptive or the normative kind of thinking about what ought to be, what should be. All right. Now, just, I hope you remember that we have at the very beginning, we have left out the non-moral actions, right? We uh, decided that there were three kinds of actions, moral, immoral, and non-moral. And from the purview of ethics, we have left out the non-moral actions. Now, we have to keep in mind that there can be a few other types of actions which are not morally judgeable which cannot be morally judged. Now, what are they? For that, we have to know the preconditions of ethics. There are certain preconditions which have to be fulfilled in order for an action to be judgeable as moral or immoral. The moment we are leaving non-moral out, we only have moral and immoral. Now, in order to decide whether it can be moral or immoral, or this should also be left out like the non-moral ones, there are certain preconditions that the action has to fulfill. I will start with an example, which is a real life example. It happened in Delhi Zoo. A mentally unstable person once jumped into the tiger enclosure and the white tiger killed the person. And there was a crowd, a gathering, which was who were recording a MMS video of the whole situation. Now, if we try to analyze the actions ethically of the tiger, what was the action? It was killing the person. A person was killed. But by whom? By the tiger. Can we say that the action of the tiger was unethical or for that matter, ethical? Why not? No, it cannot be. Because it is its face. Yes. Yes, exactly. He has acted by his nature. Second, what about the mentally unstable person? Was his action, is his action judgeable as ethical or unethical, moral no, or immoral? It is immoral. It is, it is non-moral, non we cannot judge it because he's- We cannot judge it, why? is unstable person his action cannot be judged no because he's mentally unstable his action cannot be judged and what about the crowd who were uh, recording the video this is immoral immoral why because because they had the option of option. saving him saving it. so here is a question of having an option. So one precondition that has to be fulfilled for an action to be judged as moral or immoral is freedom. 
you must have the freedom to perform an act. What is freedom in performing an act? If you have multiple choices and you are making a choice, then you are responsible for your choice, right? You have a number of choice, choice A, choice B, choice C, and I'm picking, cho picking choice B. If I'm picking choice B, then I'm also responsible for choice B. That is freedom. Okay? So suppose you are good with computers, you know hacking, but you have never unethically used hacking in your life. Now somebody points a gun at you and makes you rob a bank, hack the computers of a bank and rob it. Can I say that your action was immoral? No. But why? Because we don't have option now. Because you did not have the option, there was a gun pointed it at was you. Forced. And you did not have the freedom to choose. Choose. Yeah. It was not your personal choice. You did not have the freedom to choose. It was forced. So now, if we take that example, if we go back to the example, we'll see that the tiger acted by its nature. Nature has created ti tiger in a way that it will definitely attack somebody who is in the enclosure. So he did not have the freedom or the rationality that I have the choice of eating this person or I have the choice of leaving him alone. And then it is not that he decided which one to act on. <clears throat> Excuse me. He acted by nature. So we cannot judge his action. Same for the mentally unstable person. He also did not have the rationality to decide what were the choices available to him and then make a particular choice. He also acted just by reflex. So we cannot judge these actions as morally right or wrong. But for the people who were recording the MMS video, they had the option A of trying to help the person and option B of just standing and recording. They chose option B and so they are responsible for their choice and their action can be judged ethically. Now, there is one more thing that the tiger and this mentally unstable person lacked other than freedom. There's one more thing that they lacked. What was that? Anyone? The ability of thinking properly is the knowledge. Yeah, tiger the tiger is lacking the thinking power. Yeah, the knowledge and the thinking power, <laughs> those things were lacking in the mentally unstable person and the tiger. They did not have the knowledge of what can happen if I do it. So another precondition is one of knowledge. Suppose uh, you have an Android phone with you. A child comes to your house. The child... Is it okay? It's okay? So uh, the child is playing with your mobile phone and then suddenly takes it to a bucket of water and drops it there. What do you do? Give him a tight slap. <laughs> no, man, because child doesn't have any knowledge of what will happen. Yeah, definitely. You, yeah, you can give him a tight slap out of anger. That can happen. But if no, you we ask, cannot give. <laughs> we cannot give because he doesn't your, have knowledge. Yeah. You should not give. It is not that you cannot give. You can. You should not. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Because he doesn't uh, know what is the consequences will happen. Exactly. In that action. He doesn't know, he or she doesn't know what can happen if it is done. But this should not be questioned. This should not be confused with a situation where you should know something, but you still don't know. So if I have been sent today's schedule, somebody has emailed me the schedule 
but i can say that i did not arrive for the class because i did not see the see my email and i did not know here not knowing is not an excuse because i should have known about the child i cannot say the child should have known or the tiger should have known or the mentally unstable person should have known but yes i about my class i should have known so if a person in the crowd says that i did not know that i had to save him that is again not an excuse it is about the capacity to know or like she was thinking the capacity to think right so this cannot be an excuse not knowing cannot be an excuse for your immoral act <laughs> The next concept we are going to deal with is moral dilemma. Again, we'll start with an uh, example. This is about a student in the 1940s, at the time of German war. This student's brother was fighting the forces, and he was killed in it. Uh, could I request the online participants to mute yourselves? thank you um so this student who was um in the 1940s his brother was fighting in the uh, german war and he was killed so he also wanted to fight in the uh, the same forces that killed his brother and avenge his death on the other hand he was living it with his mother and he was the only consolation in her life now he believed that he had a dilemma here about what he should do this is an instance of moral dilemma where there appears to be two paths in front of you and you do not know which one to choose but you cannot say that the i had a moral dilemma of deciding whether to cheat in my exam or not to cheat that is not a moral dilemma because it is evident one is morally correct other is morally wrong if there are two options both of which appear to be morally correct to you and you are not able to choose between one then it is a case of moral dilemma is there anyone who wants to share an example of moral dilemma you can come up with it <laughs> anyone so that i understand that you have understood the concept of moral dilemma no yes no i'm sure you've understood if you can come up with an example Both the parents are fighting. The kid don't know who to take. <laughs> Which side to take? And the kid is in a moral dilemma of whom to support. <laughs> But sure. This is his career dilemma. Is this a moral dilemma? <laughs> yeah, sure. they did not know the rule but they should have known the rule so that is because if uh, if somebody is in a place they are supposed to know the rules before entering the place so there that is not an excuse of i did not know if a child did that that can be excused the child might not know 
but somebody who is in that place should have made sure they known the they have known the rules before entering so that is again not a dilemma the best example is if terrorists are kidnapping few hostages and they want uh, another terrorist in exchange now the government is in moral dilemma whether to uh, leave that terrorist or save those hostages yes Now, good example, example is this yeah. one for example Uh, we know that uh, uh, giving mobile phone to the children is uh, will be a problem also but yeah. in the era of this online exams this thing that thing anyway we have to give phone for the children so yeah. that it will be a valid dilemma man yeah because uh, you are giving the phone, if it if the, your dilemma is whether to give the phone or not to give the phone because you know that giving the phone will save your time and help you in uh, dealing with the child yeah. and uh, and you also know that giving the phone will uh, like not help him from uh, have some negative consequences also have negative consequences then that is not a moral dilemma okay. the moral dilemma arises if you think that you have to give the child for his exams and at the same time if you give he might misuse it yes ma'am that's all so i am thinking exactly so there are two ways both of which are correct giving is also correct Yes, not ma'am. giving is also correct that only i thought to give it and in that, moral dilemma and in such a case there arises a moral dilemma where both the paths appear to be correct morally correct wise wise correct? yeah arjun was in a moral dilemma we all know the story behind it and arjun was definitely in a moral dilemma whether to do his duty or to save his relatives okay thank you for the examples so like i said that in some situations the more distinction between moral and immoral is very clear to us there if we cannot decide whether to be moral or to be immoral then that is not a moral dilemma that is my decision to be immoral maybe i want to be immoral there so that is why i have a dilemma otherwise i wouldn't have but if both the paths appear to be equally correct equally morally correct and i am not able to choose between one then that is a case of moral dilemma okay i hope i'm clear so there are certain features that must be present in a moral dilemma firstly there must be more than one option if there is no option then there is no dilemma so there must be at least more than one option at least two options available to you second is the agent can do both the options if you cannot do one then again dilemma does not arise suppose i'm walking uh, by the banks of a river i found i find that a person is drowning in the river and i find that another person is drowning in quicksand so there are two options i have to save this person or that person both are unknown to me now if i do not know swimming then i cannot save the person in the river my dilemma is solved so one con a second condition is after the first condition that more than one option has to be available to me second condition is i have to be able to do both i can do both i can swim and i can also help the person in quicksand so i have two options and i can do both the third is i cannot do both at the same time if i first encounter the person who is drowning in water i know swimming i save him then i encounter the person who is drowning in quicksand i again help him so there is no moral dilemma but if i see both of them at the same time and i can help only one because if i go to save the person who is drowning in water then the person in quicksand will die if i save the other person then the first person will die so both the tasks have to be performed at the same time right so what are uh, the features of i'll just repeat the features of a moral dilemma first is more than one option is available to me and i feel that i am required to perform both morally second is i can do both i am capable of doing both third i cannot do both at the same time right 
and so only in this case only if all these three conditions are fulfilled there arises a conflict a moral dilemma okay any questions up to now anything any problem so we'll move on to the next part which is about the branches of ethics <clears throat> the main divisions of ethics are normative ethics meta ethics and applied ethics now when we are concerned about the issues inside ethics like which action is morally good which action is morally bad and why why we should consider them as morally good or morally bad the justifications then we are talking about issues inside ethics that is called normative ethics meta ethics is like i said metaphysics i was talking about yesterday meta means beyond so in meta ethics again meta means beyond so i am going beyond ethics and asking questions about ethics whether the ethical terms are meaningful i am not talking about particular actions suppose i say that stealing is wrong it is a particular action that i'm saying stealing is morally wrong it is a particular action that i'm judging and why it is wrong that is a question of normative ethics now if i tell you that you have stolen and stealing is very wrong now you ask me what exactly do you mean by morally wrong define morally wrong that is a meta ethical question because that is not judging a particular action you are asking about the language of ethics so that is a meta ethical question you are going beyond ethics to ask questions about the language of ethics so things like whether ethical sentences ethical propositions are at all meaningful these kind of questions and the meanings of ethical terms what they actually mean whether they at all have any meaning so these kind of questions are dealt with in meta ethics now from the sphere of ethics if i try to apply these outside ethics outside philosophy then the question of applied ethics arises if i apply it in business then we have business ethics for environment we have environmental ethics animal ethics wherever we apply it we have that ethics applied to that field this is the basic difference between the three fields normative ethics meta ethics and applied ethics we'll concentrate mainly on normative ethics about questions of particular acts and the justification of why they are morally correct or morally wrong so normative the task of normative ethics is to provide action guides about what you ought to do what should be done in a situation which action is morally right or wrong which what kind of person should one be and it is interested in determining the content of our moral behavior so what will it actually do it will try to determine the basis through which we can decide which actions are morally correct or wrong and to do this they will try to provide a principle or an ethical code in order to judge which actions are correct and which actions are wrong we need a code or a principle now tell me something sorry tell me something that when i asked you to give an example of morally good action or and a morally bad action you were very prompt and you gave me examples of lying and uh, helping others so it is as simple as that then why do we need a principle to decide which action is correct and which action is wrong it is as simple as all that obviously tell me kindness showing kindness is it morally good or morally bad morally good murdering someone morally bad so you can judge it just like that then why do we need a principle because yeah. it depends upon situation mama yes exactly just 
just think for a moment a small activity of 2 minutes just think of any kind of morally bad action morally wrong action just think about it you don't have to tell me any morally wrong action that comes to your mind okay done so very simple thing now all you have to do is you have to place this morally wrong action in a situation where it is not morally wrong can you do that can you take the mic Suppose they go and uh, steal some medicine, but they don't have uh, the money. But the medicine is uh, life-changing for them. Yeah, but in that case, he could have asked for it, or yeah, you could have asked for help. Maybe no one can. He asked for help, but nobody uh, uh, agreed to help. All right, beating someone and yeah. For example, encountering encountering a rapist. Right. In self defense, hitting someone is bad, but if you're doing it in self defense, then your example, I am just not taking it right now because there could have been a lot of options. He could have asked for help. There can be certain free government organizations where free medicines are given. so if he has exhausted all the options then perhaps it depends on the situation um, yeah in kindness and murdering someone yeah what if a patient who has uh, suffered from cancer and wants to die himself we are helping them to die then this can be uh, <laughs> that, that is you might, you might perceive it as morally wrong <laughs> I, I might no uh, that is we that is called euthanasia and that is not morally that is not legally permitted <laughs> so we are not going to talk about that because then if you do something like that and say that ma'am has asked me said that it is morally correct i am definitely not going into that it is not legally permitted so let's not talk about that but you are talking about stealing right so stealing does anything come to your mind where stealing is not morally wrong <laughs> stealing is not morally wrong where robin hood situation <laughs> so for example a person who sure? is not in, a person yeah. who is not in a very uh, stable mind if he thinks that he will be getting suicide at that time if he steal something which will help him to suicide will be a morally good thing no? which will help him to suicide No, which will help him not to suicide. I am telling. For okay. example, if he is in a some stage of mind where he or she may be thinking to commit with something which they are having nearby, if we are saying that, avoiding them to not to suicide. Instead of suicide, he decides to steal. I am not very sure of this example, but yeah, a very close example to this that came to my mind right now. If we steal a gun from a suicidal person. is that wrong yeah i am telling the same thing only ma'am just okay. elaborately i was telling i am telling right. that for example anything which we are stealing which will help them to get suicide that means it will be moral i thought right i did not understand i'm sorry but this is the okay. thing that is a very good example and this actually happened uh, a police officer's gun was stolen and you understand a police officer's gun being stolen is a huge thing and requires huge punishment for anybody who has done it but then it was realized but uh, when the uh, like the people who have stolen were found it was his friends who stole the gun because this person was becoming suicidal and for that night the friends did not think it was safe to leave the gun with him so they stole the gun and they were not punished so this is a case where stealing is not morally wrong so we see that just by the action we cannot decide whether that action is morally right or morally wrong there are many things associated with the action which determines whether it is morally correct or morally wrong so what are the things that are associated with an action firstly there is a motive your intentions that you are talking about 
the motive why a person who is performing the act why he is doing it his intentions behind doing it what are his intentions that is important again an action has a few consequences what is happening because of the action what is happening after the action is being performed those are the consequences so one is motive why the person is acting in that way why the action is being performed the reason and there are consequences what happens from that action what happens because of that action and third there is also the character of the individual who is acting in that way these three things are associated with the action none of these theories of normative ethics we are talking about normative ethics right as different from meta ethics and applied ethics now there are also theories of normative ethics and none of these theories of normative ethics are going to ask you to judge an action simply by that action because as we have seen in the examples that we have dealt with that it can differ from situation to situation the same action can be morally correct in one situation and it can be morally wrong in another situation i'll give you one last example suppose a person um a person a he murders an individual in self defense somebody who has come to rob him and he wants to save himself in that he murders a person and a person b he goes to rob someone and murders that innocent person in both cases the action is of murder but we will definitely say we i think we all will agree that one is morally wrong and the other is morally correct so because of this none of the theories will say that an action is right or wrong just by the look of it then what are the reasons why an action is morally correct or morally wrong the reasons are just these the motive the consequence or the character of the individual who is performing the act so this brings us to the theories of normative ethics which are first teleology telos means end and teleology are the theories which say that action is right or wrong based on its consequence we have to, in order to judge whether an action is correct or action is wrong we have to judge the consequence of the action and then from the consequence de deciding on whether the consequence is good or bad the action will be determined as morally correct or morally wrong it can have two versions if i ask you that it is more it is good for whom the consequence has to be good okay but good for whom if i say that it should be good for me the action the consequence the consequence should be good for me in the long run then it is egoism if i say that action should be good for everybody which is famously known as greatest good for the greatest number then it is utilitarianism utility utility utilitarianism a famous propounder of egoism is thomas hobbes and utilitarianism we have the names of bentham j s mill john stuart mill now some theorists would say that just the consequence is not sufficient we have to look beyond that the consequence can be accidental suppose your friend asked you for notes of a class that he has missed you don't want to give the notes at all but that day by accident you leave your copy behind and your friend gets all the notes so what is the consequence is that he got the notes and you helped him but can i say that your action is morally correct can cannot why because we have not judged your intentions so these people will say that consequence can be accidental <laughs> what we have to see is the intention they are called deontologists and this intention should be your duty as immanuel kant would say 
Immanuel Kant is a philosopher, very famous philosopher, who would say that this intention should be a duty. What is a duty? We have to go a very long way for that. He said that act only on the maxim through which you can at the same time will that it should become a universal law. That only that maxim of action is correct, which you can universalize, which you are, you are willing to universalize consistently. But we'll not go into those details. If you're interested, you can contact me after the class, then I can explain. So deontology is of Immanuel Kant. Dion is from duty. The term Dion is from duty. And there's another group of people who will say that a morally correct action and a morally wrong action in a particular instance is not important at all. What is important is the character of the individual who is performing. So the stress is on the character of the individual. Uh, if you're not so sure about where this virtue ethics is applied, I'll just give you an example. Suppose there is a very wealthy individual who is also eccentric. Now he buys a plot of land, which is very beautiful, which has very beautiful trees, greenery, some very rare species of plants and uh, flowers, and also a natural pond. It is a very beautiful place that is naturally beautiful. But he is not interested in the beauty of it. He is only interested in his security. He cuts down the plants. He gets the whole pond cemented. And he um, constructs light security cameras everywhere. What he does, is it a correct thing to do? Is it morally right? It does not seem to be morally right to destroy so much of nature, right? That is so beautiful. It does not seem to be morally correct. But why is it wrong? Because his intention is to just be secured, is to confirm that he is secured. That is his intention. And the consequence is that he is secured in his place. Then why do we say he's wrong? Because our main question is, what kind of a person would do this? Our main question is not about his motives or about the consequence. Yes, some of the nature has been destroyed. That is a bad consequence. But if we look at the entire nature of Earth, then that is very little. So the consequence is not huge. So the, our main question is not about motive or consequence, but about what kind of a person would do such a thing? That is the main question of virtue ethics, that what kind of person you are, not about where, what, how you're acting in one particular instance. Many instances of actions are going to determine what kind of person you are. Any questions? Clear anybody, everybody who was asking me yesterday about how to judge particular actions, your questions been answered? <laughs> Great. So about just, I'll just say one or two lines about meta-ethics and applied ethics. I said I will concentrate on normative ethics only, and I have concentrated only on that. But just a few lines on meta-ethics and uh, applied ethics, not much, we'll not go into details about it. Meta-ethics, like I said, mainly deals with the language of ethics. It goes beyond ethics. <laughs> and it can say, some of the meta-ethicists would say that the language is just a factual language. Just like sun rises in the east, the question of when I say you ought to do something, I mean that you are required by the society or by someone to do something. So it is just, it can be translated into a factual statement without any loss of meaning. They are called the ethical naturalists. Another group would say that no, they, the ethical statements, the ethical propositions have a separate meaning of their own and they occupy an autonomous class. 
they are the ethical non-naturalists. And another group would say that the ethical propositions are meaningless altogether. They have no meaning. They are just an expression of our emotions, of what we feel. They are the ethical non-cognitivists. And about applied ethics, it is an evaluation of particular things, acts, practices, or institutions as right or wrong, good or bad. Like if we are talking about business practices, what are the responsibilities of business over and above making profit? So these questions are asked in applied ethics, bioethics, like he, he was talking about uh, euthanasia, these questions cloning, these questions are addressed in bioethics, professional ethics, those who came late for class, you need a course on professional ethics and uh, environmental ethics and there are many others as well, that how uh, nature should be treated, how plants, animals should be treated. That's all about ethics. Very preliminary understanding. Thank you. Any more questions? Ma'am? Yes. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, can you please repeat the morality in the narrow sense and broad sense? Morality in the narrow sense and broad sense. Yes, sure. We began with that. I spoke about three terms, moral, immoral, and non-moral. So when I'm saying, uh, uh, talking about moral, immoral, and non-moral, moral means morally good actions, immoral means morally wrong actions, and non-moral means actions that do not come under the purview of morality. So when I'm talking about morality in the broad sense, I am talking about morality as opposed to non-moral as or just by leaving aside non-moral, which does not come under the purview of morality. The rest of everything that is either moral or immoral are moral, it comes under morality in the broad sense. But in the narrow sense, it is, we are talking about morality as opposed to immoral, which is about only morally good actions as different from the immoral actions. Uh, I will just show you the PPT, just the slide once again. So this is moral and uh, non-moral. If you can, uh, can you see the slide? No, no, I can't see. You can't see the slide? No. Sorry. No, now I can see. Okay, so you see that in the broad sense, you see it is pointed out in the broad sense that moral as opposed to non-moral, right? And within moral in the broad sense, we have moral in the narrow sense, which is morally good and immoral actions as well. Anything that can be judged morally, be it morally good or morally wrong, okay? That comes under morality in the broad sense. Yes. So, so in broad sense, immoral also come, comes under. Yeah. Broad. yeah, immoral also comes under morality in the broad sense, but not in the narrow sense. When I'm talking about whether an action comes under the purview of morality, then I'm not judging whether that action is moral or immoral. Whether stealing comes under the purview of morality, yes, it does. Although it is an immoral act, it is not moral in the narrow sense. But in the broad sense, it comes under the purview of morality. Which okay? we can judge. Which, we exactly. can... Which can be judged morally. Any action that can be judged morally is moral in the broad sense. Okay, ma'am. Anything else? Okay, ma'am. Yes. Anything else? Any other questions? <laughs> Sure. Hi. 
No, morality, the requirement why morality originated or why it was adopted in the society. The answer to that is social contract. Right? That why it was adopted in the first place. Like I said, that it is very good to imagine that I'm in a situation where I'll not be morally judged. I can do whatever I want. Then why would I want it to happen in the first place? Why would I want to enter into a contract like that? So why it originated, the answer to that is social contract. But yes, a lot of people do not want to maintain the social contract or they think that the other people should maintain the social contract. I will not do so. And definitely we judge, we can judge their actions under morality in the broad sense. There was also a question yesterday about whether it should, it differs from person to person. Whether the question of morality differs from person to person, whether it is what is good for you might not be good for me. But if I say that, that the question of ethics does not arise. The moment you say that this action is good, I will say, okay, it is good for you. It is not good for me. So then the question of ethics does not arise at all. And any more questions? Online participants, anything else? About uh, the divisions of ethics, the branches of ethics, any questions? For example, we are in some moral dilemma. How yeah. to take a how to take a right decision? Is there how any principle to, or is there any theory? Yeah, definitely. Is there any how yardstick, to, man? Yeah, how to take a decision in a moral uh, dilemma is another part of the story. Today we have just learned what is moral dilemma, but how to take a decision? There are uh, different ways, like prioritizing and. Uh, pointing out which are the options available to you and then taking a decision. There can be a slow mode decision or a fast mode decision. And there are many things associated with it. The most important is prioritizing the options, getting the options clear about which are the options available to me and prioritizing. So in the example that I gave that I have to save a person from drowning, I do not have the time to think that whether which option will be the correct option to pursue because by the time I think the person will drown. So I have to act immediately. I might not have that time with me. But yes, in a business decision or in a decision where I have a, uh, like uh, I can use a time, I can have a time to decide there obviously the decisions are sometimes better. So it is always better to give time, but that is not always the case. There are situations where you do not have time at all. You have to make up your mind in an instant. Okay, then thank you. Yes, sure. Can you be a little louder or take a mic? No, it depends. You have freedom of speech, right? So that that is your right. So that is not a problem. Now, who hurting by your speech is another question. If you're hurting the sentiments of individuals by your speech. Hmm. Yeah, so it means that you have the option. You have the right to right of speech, definitely. But you have the option to decide what you're going to speak about. 
So there a very prudent decision is required where he is saying of a, talking of a situation where it might hurt a person at, at the beginning, but it might help him in long, long run. So if that is true, if that situation is true, if it is not just his perception of it, then again, it will. it is your choice. You will be judged for it. Right? You have the choice of speaking and not speaking or speaking of something else. So whatever your choice is, you will be judged. You can be judged by your intentions. You can be judged by your consequences of your speech or you can be judged for the person you are. If you're that kind of a person, then whatever you say, however correct it is, you will still be judged. So these are the things it will depend on. Yeah. Nothing else? One sure. Uh, what is right for them? Mm. But it is not good for society. So what is the uh, what is right for them but not good for the society as in? That is your perception of it. Yes. Why do you think it is not good for the society? Society says that it is not ethical. It was like their children, uh, what is it, a couple of years children, or like that. So those are the consequences that uh, the society is afraid of. So if it is a particular act, like I said, you can judge by the motive of it, you can judge by the intention of it, or by the consequence of it. If you judge by the consequence of it, here what is being done is they're being judged by the consequence of it. No, actually, the best example for the doubt may be if, for example, we are driving a car. Hmm. Driving a car will be reaching, that means we'll be reaching quickly, will be benefit for us. But on the other side, it pollutes the environment. So it is not benefit for the society. In that situation, yes. how we can do it? See, if you have the option, you have the option of walking to that distance, but still you're taking a car. You have the option of taking a public transport, but still you're taking a car for your comfort. Okay, then the option, answer is obvious. Okay, since option is there, we can go for no, since car. No, no, you got it absolutely wrong. Since option is there, you are responsible for the option you pick. So if yeah, you have the option, if you have the yeah. option of walking to the distance, but still you decide to take the car and pollute the environment, yeah. then you are responsible no. for it. If you have no. the option of taking a public transport, but still you take the car, yeah, it's not, we are again responsible you are responsible for, for your choice. But yeah. if it is a you are going to a place where public transport is not available and the distance is not walkable and there is no other option so you are not you do not have any other choice then your action will not be judged under uh, morality or in the broad sense so the main thing is whether you have the options and which option you are picking if you are picking an option that is your responsibility if you did not have an option, then it's simple. Yeah. Bioethics. Yes, I can talk about bioethics. There are, there are many questions related to bioethics, like he's talking about euthanasia, whether it is morally correct or morally wrong, suicide, about whether it is morally correct or wrong. There are questions of cloning. These are actually very new areas of ethics that people are working on right now. So these are all questions of whether it is morally correct or morally wrong. These kinds of actions that are related to uh, biology. So, and if you want more details on this, I can always give you materials. Mm -hmm.
So, are we done? Yes. Any other argument? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Because ultimately, at the highest level of your degree, you have to philosophize. Whatever your subject is, you have to philosophize. So that is why you're all doctor of philosophy. And if there is any other argument, then I'm not aware of it. All right. Are we done? Any online questions anymore? Uh, Ma'am, I have a question. Yes, sure. Uh, how can we get the PPTs and other materials? Those will be given to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Very, very pertinent question. Okay. Thank you. It was a pleasure interacting with you all. And it was a very interactive session. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.